Good morning, dear audience. Let me present my topic, which is about life-changing treatments in central nervous system diseases. Uh, my name is Janka Kovács, and I'm a pediatric resident at the Semmelweis uh, University. My supervisor is Miklós Garami. My SMSs are uh, Mahmoud Obeidat and Vanda Malti, and my statisticians are Silvia Kisdala and Gergely Agós. My vision is to improve the life quality and extend the life expectancy of children treated with brain cancer. And my mission is to provide guidelines for these patients who have uh, central nervous system diseases like uh, malignancies and hydrocephalus. Uh, I've got two ongoing projects. The first project is about uh, antibiotic impregnated ventricle operator nascent infections. Uh, this is a systematic review and a meta analysis. And my second project will be a clinical trial at our department uh, about the targeted therapies. Um, in one in uh, 500 to one in 1,000 babies are born with uh, hydrocephalus, but uh, there can be uh, also other reasons uh, which can lead to this uh, condition. For example, uh, hemorrhage, uh, trauma, infection, or intracranial uh, tumors. Uh, ventricle operator nascent is the most common treatment for this disease, and an estimated 30,000 fee patient procedures are performed yearly in the United States. The problem is that the incidence of infection is still uh, really high. It's between 3 and 20 percent, and it can lead, for example, to two times higher mortality. Uh, our aim was to compare the rate of uh, bacterial repatient infections with and uh, without antibiotic prophylaxis. So uh, we uh, conducted this uh, meta-analysis on all the patients, so also adults, not just children, and uh, the uh, antibiotic prophylaxis was, was an uh, antibiotic impregnated shunt, which was impregnated with uh, vancomycin and rifampicin. We hypothesized that the rate of bacterial infection decreases with this uh, antibiotic prophylaxis. So I've conducted my systematic search at the end of November 2022. I had three main domains. The first domain is about uh, VP shunt, the second is about infection, and the third is about prophylaxis and treatment. First, I had like uh, more than 10,000 hits, and at the end, I have uh, 27 full eligible articles. Four of them are uh, randomized control trials, and the other uh, 23 are retrospective observational cohort studies. This is my main forest plot, which is about infection in a mixed population. The measure of effect was odds ratio, and if the odds ratio is below one, that means that um, uh, that uh, antibiotic impregnated shunt has a protective factor against bacterial VP shunt infections, and if it's more than one, that means that uh, basically standard shunt is the better. So here there are all my articles, and the overall odds ratio was uh, 0 0.44, which means if you use a standard ventricle operator nation, then then the patient will have like two and a half times higher chance to, to get a bacterial VP shunt infection. My second forest plot is also about uh, infection, but I had here like uh, two subgroups. Um, the first subgroup was about children, so patients below 18 years old, and my second uh, subgroup was uh, adults. Uh, here you can see that that uh, this forest plot shows us a tendency that uh, antibiotic impregnated ventricle operator uh, can be even more effective in the children population. My uh, third forest plot is about shunt failure in a mixed population. Uh, this topic is really important because uh, if a patient has a shunt failure, then you have to remove the shunt and use, for example, a systematic antibiotic treatment and an external ventricular device. And after the patient uh, is getting better, you should also perform an other sh shunt surgery, which is uh, which can cause like um, emotional has and, for example, financial difficulties to the patient and also to the hospital. Here I had uh, four randomized control trials and five retrospective observational cohort studies, and the overall odds ratio was, was 0 0.73. For example, you can see in Atanalo's article that the odds ratio was 0 0.34 which can be because here the population were uh, only children who had a planned surgery. But for example, in Wong's article, the odds ratio was uh, 1.27, uh, 
Here, the population were adults who have like uh, multiple uh, risk factors, for example, steroid uh, treatment and diabetes, and uh, they they mostly had uh, an urgent surgery because of um, trauma, hemorrhage, or or intracranial tumors. So this can this can lead to this uh, discrepancy on this uh, for S plot, mm, and there are also other reasons which can cause a shunt failure, for example, a blockage or hemorrhage. Uh, at the end, we would like to suggest to use an uh, antibiotic impregnated shunt uh, when it's possible, because the main reason of uh, shunt failure is still the infection. So the strength of uh, our meta-analysis is that we had uh, basically a large number of patients, and uh, the articles were written in, in nine different countries. The limitations are that there were only like uh, four randomized control trials, and in some articles we didn't uh, see the detailed age grouping. The conclusion is that antibiotic impregnated shunts uh, can decrease the rate of bacterial infection uh, to about one third, and the implication for the practice would be to use these antibiotic impregnated VP shunts when it's available. And for the research, more randomized control trials are needed, for example, about the, the rate of shunt failures, and uh, adults and children should be investigated separately. So uh, I've submitted my article yesterday uh, to the Journal of Neurology, Neurosurgery and Psychiatry, uh, which is a D1 journal. And um, let me present my second topic, which is about uh, the precision, precision therapy with the oral anti-cancer drug uh, Dabrafenib in pediatric brain malignancies. Uh, about 30% of childhood malignancies are brain cancer, but with the conventional treatment, the five-year survival rate is still about uh, 75%. The conventional treatment means like uh, surgery, radiotherapy, and chemotherapy. Uh, luckily, uh, we can use, and it's also available in Hungary, the next generation sequencing. And based on these results, we can we can use like uh, oral targeted therapies for children. And in case of BRAF mutation, uh, Dabrafenib had a meaningful clinical activity. At uh, the Semmelweis University Pediatric Center, these, uh, these uh, targeted therapies are also available. And we can use uh, Dabrafenib, for example, uh, for patients who are treated with pyrocytic gastrocytoma. We don't really have like human data about the penetration uh, to the blood-brain barrier. So we would like to um, define the optimal dose of oral dobrofenib in children treated with brain malignancies, which can also reach an adequate cerebral spinal fluid concentration. Um, our question was that uh, how can dobrofenib doses be optimized uh, individually by monitoring drug levels in the blood and in the cerebral spinal fluid, because we hypothesize that uh, oral dobrofenib given in the usual dose cannot, cannot reach the adequate uh, level in the cerebral spinal fluid. Uh, we would like to provide recommendations for optimal, optimal dobrofenib dose to reach the optimal drug level. And uh, we also uh, received our uh, ethical approval for this project and we started to, to do the measurements at the end of October. So I'm planning um, to finish my second project at the uh, end of uh, October. And uh, of course, I will have something to do with my first project uh, after the revision. Thank you for your attention. Uh, and my favorite quote is from uh, Kurt Vonnegut, which is, science is magic that works. Could you go back to figure three of your first project? Uh, just, I, I don't want to, okay, yes. So, um, do you happen to know what it was the difference between the first like Atanello, uh, uh, study and all the rest? Because to me, it seems like if you take out that one, uh, it changes the, the results. So maybe did you do a, a sensitivity analysis leaving out, uh, each study one by one? Thank you for your question. We didn't do a sensitivity analysis, but um, um, I think that is because in Atanalo's article, they were um, so they they were uh, writing about uh, infants, 
And I also have a forest plot, which is about infants, so so patients under one year old, and and uh, there the the um, protective uh, eff effect against uh, bacterial B patient infections is uh, more significant. So we saw that it can be the reason. I'd like to ask you a question regarding to your first project. Uh, maybe do you have any data on uh, the non-impregnated shunt uh, patients um, about the systemic antibi antibiotic use? Maybe they used uh, intravenous antibiotics or not? Uh, thank you for your question. So there is a protocol and um, it a bit differs in every hospital. So before the shunt surgery, every patient uh, gets uh, some uh, systematic antibiotics and they can continue it for two or three more days. And uh, most of the day they got uh, cephalosporins and, uh, and some vancomycin as well. So all the patients, even even those patients who have an antibiotic impregnated shunt get uh, systematic antibiotic treatment. Thank you for the surgery. Thank you. How many children do you think can be involved in the analysis in the clinical trial? How many are you expecting to include? Uh, thank you for your questions. So uh, right now uh, we have about uh, 10, 15 patients who are getting this uh, oral targeted therapy, Dabrafenib at our clinic. But we had a discussion with my supervisor and the other uh, centers, uh, um, senior doctors, that that we plan to to include all the other ped pediatric centers where where uh, children with cancer are treated. So we are expecting like at least ten more patients. And I believe this uh, uh, knowing the levels of the uh, rostanib could help to avoid the toxic levels also. Are there any severe adverse effects of dobrofeniv, which should be nice to avoid? Or can you list some of these adverse effects of it? Thank you for your question. So um, basically, oral targeted therapies have uh, mostly similar uh, adverse uh, events as, as the conventional chemotherapy. Um, but these, uh, these events are less severe. Uh, so, for example, it can cause the loss of appetite, constipation, some skin lesions, and when, and what we uh, saw mostly is the um, fingernail infection, which which can be like uh, really uncomfortable and painful. So, for example.